Wow guys, this is a very controversial topic, raw food diet for dogs, especially when it comes to having a conversation with your vet about raw diet for dogs. Not all vets are opposed to feeding raw, but we can say that conventional vets mostly advocate for kibble or cooked diet over raw food diet. A list of four most common reasons why the majority of vets oppose raw food diets for dogs, as well as some important notes through my own experience and research regarding these four points. Number one, there's no scientific evidence to prove the benefit claims by the raw feeder community. There was a short study on dogs that ate raw food diet for a short period which resulted in healthier gut functions and microbiome, but no studies on long-term effect compared to other types of pet food, and this was stated by Jennifer Larson who is the Chief of Nutrition Services at UC Davis's Veterinary Medicine Teaching Hospital. And the other side that I would like to talk about is that even though there may not be enough scientific studies done on whether raw food diet is the best route for dogs, um, but based on raw feeding that's done correctly, we can say that the health benefits outweigh that of kibble and home cooked meals just by observing the changes in our dogs. We need to remember that most vets who only go through the four year program do not get enough dog nutrition education. And that's if they also take an extensive program to learn about dog nutrition. Um, vets are also trained by a system that works with conventional medication and prevention using drugs, steroids, and vaccines to cure symptoms. But the root of the problem usually is what goes into the body. We need to also look at what food nature intended for dogs by looking at their anatomy and physiology. And as we can see, wolves and dogs have the same functions. Even though there might not be enough evidence or scientific studies done on the outcome of feeding raw, we should also observe the outcome of feeding kibble. The real questions that we should be asking are what exactly does balance mean? How is kibble impacting my dogs? What's the long-term health effect of feeding kibble? And the best and most natural evidence we can rely on is one that's based on nature, which is observing the wolves. Number two, injury from bones. Vets prefer playing it on the safe side because bones represent a significant risk of dent dental fractures and gastrointestinal injury, especially if dogs are not eating a bone size that is appropriate for him. Cooked bones can splinter because the molecular structure of the bone changes when it is processed under high heat. I read a quote from Dr. Sally, a member of the AVMA in the American College of Veterinarian Nutrition, uh, which stated that domesticated dogs are very different from their wild ancestors because you don't see chihuahua nowadays chasing an elk. That it is true that cooked bones represent a danger for dogs because naturally dogs uh, should not eat cooked bones, they don't eat cooked bones. They eat and grind their teeth on raw bones, and raw bones are soft and natural for dogs while cooked bones become harder and easy to splinter which can damage any area from their mouth down to their stomach. Even in the wild, wolves can sometimes eat more than they can chew, meaning they can fracture their teeth depending on the density of the bone compared to their size. Example, a chihuahua eating elk bones. That would be very difficult for a small chihuahua, but just because a chihuahua nowadays do not chase elks doesn't mean that what nature intended for them to eat has changed. We need to look at what they naturally eat, not what we think we should feed them based on the animal food industry which is regulated by a system who profits when animals are sick. Number 3 is Bacterial Infection Raw meat and bones are most likely to be contaminated by bacteria such as Salmonella and E. coli. These bacteria can penetrate into the dog's system, cause it to be seriously ill, and there's even a possibility of your dog shedding bacteria that can be picked up by other dogs and family members in the household. And not only can dogs catch these bacterial infections, but so can people since people are handling raw meat. So this is what vets are afraid of, bacterial infections and contaminations. But studies have found that healthy dogs naturally have these bacteria in their body. It is not the bacteria that is the boogeyman, it is actually the toxin that is the boogeyman. Bacteria are just there to clean up the mess. Wherever there's toxin, that's where bacteria are, which makes them look like the bad guy because apparently they're always there at the scene to clean up the mess. An example is uh, that of yeast infection in dogs, which seems to be a very tricky infection to get rid of 
um, but what is actually happening is that the yeast bacteria is causing the yeast in order to push out waste from the body this is a sign of healing but because we are programmed to believe bacteria is a bad guy we throw in a bunch of supplements remedies vaccinations drugs etc into our dog's body to suppress the yeast infections what actually happened is we added loads of waste into the body so now instead of healing the body the body immune system is now focused on getting rid of the drugs that we threw into our dog's body so that means the symptoms of healing has stopped in order to try to rid of the loads of toxins that we put into the dog's body truth is bacteria infections are not something to be concerned about it's actually natural and normal for dogs to have these bacteria in their bodies we shall also know that the stomach acid of dogs are 10 times stronger than ours even though our domesticated dog's digestive system may not be at 100% due to being misfed for generations, they still have the same physiology as their wild ancestors. The fourth reason is nutritional deficiency. Usually, a wild wolf would eat a whole carcass like a whole rat or rabbit including the muscle, tendon, bones, organs, fur, and flesh. As for a lot of raw feeders, they feed only part of a chicken and not a whole which can lead to nutritional deficiency. And this is uh, probably true. Um, nutritional deficiency, deficiency should not be a concern if you are feeding your dog whole prey. Remember, the size of the whole prey should be appropriate for your dogs. Nutritional deficiency seems to stem mainly from conventional vets, holistic vets, vets and the bar feeder community. Based on studies on wild wolves, as long as they ate whole prey, their nutritional needs should be met and satisfied. Based on the most extensive and recent wolf study book named Wolf's Behavior, Ecology and Conservation by, Doc, by David Meck and Luigi Botani, wolves' primary food are prey animals, but they also go extended periods where they do not eat meat. They eat fruit and berries as a secondary food source. In areas of the world where weather and season permits, wild wolves will feed more extensively on fruits and berries even when prey are in abundance and availability. Wolves do not eat prey animals daily, they don't have a regular feeding schedule, and they are opportunistic scavengers. There are periods when wolves don't make a kill for several days and even weeks, therefore relying on fruits and even fasting days to heal and conserve energy. Deficiency and balance comes from the human ideology of how things should be, that there should always be balance, but let's put down our conditioning, observe how nature works, and improve our dog's health from there. There you go guys, 4 reasons why vets oppose feeding raw and a little bit of my experience and research on why these reasons should not be a big concern. Do your own research and due diligence even if you're watching our videos. You're the one making choices and we're just here sharing our experience. Thanks for watching Pom Pom Fam. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time we post. Like and comment below to let us know your thoughts on vets and raw food. See you next Thursday.